Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Akabane101, and welcome to this newbie playthrough of Stellaris, made by Paradox Interactive. We are on version Wells 2.7.1, and the reason I say I'm a newbie, I've only put about an hour into this game. One hour creating a race, one hour actually playing it, uh, and also I spent about an hour or two researching some videos on getting some pointers as to how to play. Uh, one that speaks to mind is a specs guide for version 2.3. So quite a while ago when that came out, but it does give some really good pointers. So I highly recommend go check that out if you're trying to learn how to play Stellaris. And of course, as we play through this game, it's going to be kind of a mini series. I don't think we're going to actually do a full campaign, but of course, if enough people are interested, please do feel free to let me know and I'd be happy to keep going. Because 4X games are really cool. And if you don't know what 4X is, it's explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. And I'm really bad at 4X games, and I've always wanted to get into them. The fact that this is real time is really exciting for me, and it was on sale recently. Unfortunately, not anymore, um, but I got the starter pack. I didn't buy any other DLC, just the starter pack. So if you want to follow along, that's what I'm using. Um, I have Utopia, Apocalypse, Leviathan story pack, and Synthetic Dawn story pack. No idea what they do, but that's installed and in the game. So we're gonna go new game, and of course, I'm gonna play my favorite faction in Warhammer 40,000, the Tau Empire. These boys look exactly like Tau Empire to me. <laughs> and uh, so I'm gonna play them. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I was originally thinking of doing like a United Nations of Earth playthrough, which I've done, again, about an hour into that playthrough, and I really enjoyed it. It was actually a lot of fun. And then I just wanted to make a new race, and I was like, hmm. These blue guys sure look like Tau. I guess I'll make some Tau. I even have the symbols and everything. No mods whatsoever here, so... Yeah, and we're gonna go for it. And fun fact, Tau, the race, is called Tau. The star system is called Tau. And their planet that they started on is called Tau. They're, I guess they weren't creative whatsoever when they came up with their names. They were too busy trying to make badass ships and befriending Kroot and uh, Vespids. So, you know, there's always that. <laughs> Uh, let me just go over the overview here of uh, the Tau Empire that I've created. This is not based off of anyone else's setup for the Tau. And sure, everyone's opinions may vary on like how it should be. Listen, I put an hour into this game. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going to try and loosely base a race off of one of my favorite uh, factions in Warhammer 40,000. And of course, this only takes place in near 2,200. Uh, so oligarchic, which means that every 20 years we hold an election, but this also means that we're controlled by a small group of individuals. So the populace does not vote on who is going to become the leader. It's a very small focused group of people that then vote in a leader uh, every 20 years, which is a little bit different than uh, democratic for this game, which is every 10 years, the entire populace votes on someone uh, that they want to be their leader, which is this guy right here, who is a supreme ethereal or Ethereal Supreme. We are a technocracy. To maximize efficiency, the society is governed of, uh, according to the principles of science and rationality. The personal whims of an ignorant and dangerously unqualified political elite must not be allowed to interfere. So essentially what this means is that our political leaders are scientific people. They are all about that science. It's kind of loose with how, you know, the Ethereals are in Warhammer 40,000. They're kind of more like priests or monks or... Uh, almost godlike, but not entirely god godly. I don't know. It's a weird, flimsy explanation of what Ethereals are, because you know they're they're the leaders, the elders of the Tau Empire, right? So, in in all justifiable reason, this is a technological race. So I have to make some corners get cut for me to go forward. And speaking of corners getting cut, functional architecture. So basically, they're able to construct things with paper instead of you know, the big metals or whatever like that. You know, they, they, everything costs less, essentially. And it adds for that more rigid look. They're just trying to get ships that work functionally and perfectly. And uh, because they're so efficient at advancing their technology, of course it's going to look very uh, cardboard-esque. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, egalitarian cannot use autocratic government forms, of course. Uh, so any society that does not embrace equality between its members where an individual can rise to any position with enough hard work is not only deeply unfair, but ultimately counterproductive. I mean, really, if you think about it, no one can become an ethereal in the in the Tau Empire unless, like, they're... I don't know if they're born into it or voted into it or what, but I don't really know too much about how people become ethereals. But I know, like, how they do the greater good shit, 
where they're like, you know, you can raise up, but, you know, you still got to follow your superiors and all that shit. Whatever. I just, I like the stats for this one, so we went for that. And obviously, they want to make money. <laughs> they don't want to make money. So, that's kind of important, too. And, uh, Fanatic Materialist. So, this is another one. I mean, again, we're a race of people that wants to make machines and wants to essentially build their tech quickly. So, we went for this one. So, it goes, although it hurts, we must grow up and put aside our outdated notions of morality. There is no divine spark granting special value to a living mind. No object has any intrinsic value apart from what we choose to grant it. Let us embrace the freedom of certitude and achieve maximum efficiency in all things. For the greater good. I don't know. Shit, man. It's hard to make the greater good for this. I, I'm sure some people are going to be like, that. that's not that's not a towel. But gameplay-wise, I feel like this is the best choice we have for a technological-focused race. Um, that's not Necrons, obviously. Or Mechanicus. Uh, <laughs> anyway, now we have the Reptilian Tau. We're weak. Yeah? We don't have Kroot, though, which kind of sucks, because technically we just have Kroot, and we'd be able to take it out, no problem. But we're weak. We went for some negative perks here. Um, so our army damage on the ground is 20% less. I think that doesn't affect your ships, though. Your ships should still be doing the same amount of damage. And we're also slow breeders. I don't know if that really matters too much, but I had to pick a negative perk so I could get the rest of these perks here. So we are an intelligent race. We have engineering, physics, society. Very good. And we're also natural engineers, which kind of fits in with uh, technocracy and fanatic materialist. And we're also very adaptive because the Tau, after they left their home planet, the Tau, <laughs> the Tau planet called Tau, in the star system of Tau, they moved on and uh, were able to adapt to other planets just fine. I wish I could have gotten super adaptive, because that would work really well against the uh, slow breeders, because it wouldn't matter what planet you throw them on, they're going to be living the dream. But we have to look for desert planets or something close to it, like a, I wouldn't say like a wet planet, because that's the polar opposite, but, you know, whatever. That's what we're looking for. And then this is just stuff off the wiki. We speak the language of Tau Lexicon, and our major species is Tau, Crute, and Vespid. We just clump them all together. All right. Enough of that. Again, I don't know much about the Warhammer 40k lore. As you can tell... I just like the race. They look cool. They sound cool. I play them in Dawn of War, Dark Crusade, and Soulstorm all the time. I wish they would come back, man. Um, so yeah, we have galaxy size. Everything really is uh, set to default. The only thing that's not set to default is uh, advanced AI start. So everyone in the game will start evenly. And we scroll down here. Difficulty set normally. That's an end sign. Obviously, I think that's easy because it goes like cadet, end sign, captain, commodore, 64, and then Admiral, and then Grand Admiral. But the default's Ensign, and I and again, I'm terrible at video games, so, you know, we're gonna do that. And then, what else? Iron Man mode to allow us to get the achievements. And yeah, uh, I'm relying on viewers to tell me what's good, what's not good. Oh, also, what's not default is Spiral Forearms. Uh, A-Spec said it's cool. I'm gonna believe him and do that. Let's jump on in. Okay, Tau Empire. We are Aun Va, of course. You know, the biggest name of Tau, right? Uh, prosperous unification in the eons since the first primitive Tau communities took shape amid the great dune seas of Tau. Our civilization has spread and prospered. Through scientific progress, we have managed to stomp out the superstitions that ruled the minds of our ancestors. As reason and rational thought spread amongst, amongst our people, the inefficient nation states that we had until then organized ourselves into our disbanded and uh, a council of our most accomplished scientists was gathered to rule in their stead. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane network, the finest minds of the Tau Empire have finished development of the first hyperdrives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. And here we go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to go to our shipyard and we are going to go build ourselves an extra science ship. Perfect. That'll take 60 days. That's this green dot here. And if you've never seen Stellaris before, I'll quickly go over everything real quick, even though I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, the year is currently 2200, January 1st. We have multiple resources here, very much like Civilization or other 4X type games. 
Uh, obviously way more than what you get in like a Total War game. <laughs> Where Total War is more like a 4X in the campaign mode, and then when you're actually doing the RTS stuff, it's an RTS. Where this game's like an RTS grand strategy 4X game. Very strange, but also very intriguing. I can't wait to try it out more. Uh, so, energy credits is a major one. This is kind of like our money. That's why we can have so much of it. 50,000 stored. If you're going into the market, if we hit F2, or not F2, F3? I'm learning my hockeys. F3, uh, you'll see that if we go to sell some of our stuff, everything sells into energy. So, energy seems to me like it is money at this point in time. So, everything converts into money, and there you go. Uh, which I do actually want to sell some of my food. Because we're getting 21 per turn, the plus 21, that's that's per month, a turn, month, real time, whatever. Um, so yeah, we're going to be selling a little bit of our food off because I think we're okay. We'll get enough food for colonization later. Um, oh, also, I think I forgot to mention that the colonization is at, uh, is setting is at two. Uh, two. Two habitable planets, excuse me, is nearby uh, in the nearby star sectors, whatever the hell you call them. I don't know anything about space. <laughs> anyway, energy credits, money. Minerals, you build, uh, you turn these into alloys, and then alloys are what you build your ships out of. Um, you can also do other things with minerals, like create uh, structures and stuff like that for your main base. You got food, helps pe feed the people, which is always important, and you're always consuming food. But obviously food, you know, you need it. You need it for trade as well and selling stuff. Uh, did I sell my food yet? I did not. There we go. Sold my food. Consumer goods, you can convert this into random items, even research and stuff like that. I'm assuming this is like your video games and shit like that, right? Just, you gotta feed the populace with video games. Alloys, we just spent our allies, obviously, on the on the ship that we're making. Influence, uh, which we can use to help with certain situations inside our governments and buildings and stuff like that. Our unity allows us to do traditions, which is like discovery. We're probably gonna go for discovery first, maybe expansion second. Uh, so we can start building our empire outwards. Um, but definitely, I think first things first, discovery, so we can get our science vessels out there, finding out what's habitable, what's mineable, all that good stuff. We want lots of science vessels. As far as I understand it, you want all the science vessels. Uh, as possible. Just to kind of get the early game going on. Um, next up. Our sciences. We start with these right off the beginning. Wait, why are you green? What are you people doing? <laughs> You're all supposed to be blue. Whatever. Uh, yeah, these are our technologies, and essentially you are gaining certain amounts of research per turn. It kind of clumps them all up to plus 88, which kind of means nothing, but... Uh, I mean, unless there's one... There's certain types of perks that are, like, everything at once. Maybe. I mean, actually, you know what? Maybe there is. Uh, so our best right now is physics research, and we're going to even bump that up further by researching this. It'll cost 2,000... So in 56 turns, after we accumulate 30 of these science things every single... I'm going to go with every single month. I think it's the same as everything else. So every single month, we get 30 of those, and we're good to go. We're going to do the same thing for our society here. This glowing one for planetary unification is based off the perks that we have. Um, so we will always have the option for planetary unification. But for now, we want to do biodiversity studies for the 20% boost. And unfortunately, we don't get the 20% boost for engineering, but that's okay. Surprisingly, our engineering is... Well, it's actually pretty close to the best. It's 49. All these stats should be pretty high, though. Um, yeah, so let's see. What do we want to go for? Mining station output plus 10%. That sounds pretty awesome to me. And it unlocks Starbase Building Nebula Refinery. Sure, why not? I don't know if that's a good choice or not, but we're just going to go for it. Why not? All right, so that's out of the way. So we're producing a science vessel. Um, we're currently working on our research. We can go to our capital here. And hopefully you guys can actually see all the text and things on screen. I did bump up the HUD by 20%. That's all experimental, so if stuff breaks, not my fault. Blame Paradox. Um, <laughs> uh, we have multiple different buildings here that do different various things. Like alloy foundries, that's how we're actually getting our alloys at the moment. Uh, and one thing we probably want to go for, as recommended by Acepac, is to get another alloy foundry, which makes perfect sense, because the more alloys you have, the more ships you can produce, which means potentially the more stuff we're going to be pumping out into the universe and using to explore or fight off uh, alien invaders, or even hopefully we can send diplomatic envoys and become buddies with other people, but you never know. There's always going to be that random xenophobe out there that's like, oh, you're not my species. You're dead, sir. You're dead. 
Uh, we have some blockers. We have industrial wastelands and sprawling slums. A bit unfortunate, but of course, at least our planet is 100% um, ha habitable by our people, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a much easier time trying to get planets that have, you know, more arid and uh, dry lands, right? But yeah, we want to get we want to get alloy foundries as soon as possible. It costs a lot of days. Like 328 days is kind of a lot, but 320 foundry or uh, minerals is what we need. So we'll try and get that uh, the moment we can. So yeah, for now, our empire, our capital, we'll just chill out doing this thing. But we do have some civilian ships. We have a construction ship hanging out. If we hit the menu button here, we can even right click. What the hell is this? the hell is this overlay? This is like the weirdest, it's so glowy where our thing is, but okay. So here's the Tau Empire. If we right click it, we can actually choose to build certain things here, such as a mining station or a research station. And now the mining station is quite expensive. It's 200 minerals and we only have 100. So we're going to spend ourselves 100 minerals and get a research station. Get that going on. I don't even know what the hell they're researching now. It's one, it's one of the planets there, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. So construction ships doing his thing. And as you can see, this is the massive universe that we're in. Galaxy? Whatever. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> I guess this is one giant galaxy with solar systems? Or is this really the universe? Man, the universe sure is small now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course, when zoomed out of this space, it seems so small. Um, but yeah, let's see where we can go from here. So we're going to select survey, and we're just going to try and figure out where the hell everything is. And, uh, continue on. Boop, boop. End up over here. And then the other one's gonna get the close by stuff. This is called a, um, what do you call it? You know, uh, constellation. There you go. These thicker lines are all called a constellation. So they all kind of interconnect with each other. And I've never left a constellation before, so I'm super excited to see how that goes. So yeah, there we go. Let's double click on our guy, or I think we have to do it from here. <laughs> Zoom on in. Oh, yeah, look at these beautiful structures. And then let's unpause and hit fast. And you'll see all these progress bars going away. Our construction guy doing his thing. In fact, where are you building this? So you're building it on here. Oh, okay. So now we're going to get the society research. Sure thing. And then our scientist is going to teleport away. And we almost have access to our brand new ship. Here we are in Kofifi. <laughs> I uh, okay. So we're gonna pause it for a sec because we just got ourselves a new science vessel. And now these things don't come manned. Construction ships do come manned, uh, manned with just like you know regular plebs, workers, stuff like that. Um, but we have to recruit leaders. Uh, leaders will guide us to victory. So yeah, we gotta pick one, and each have various traits on them. So this one is resilient, so we can live 25 extra years. Both of them do. Uh, and then this extra one here, uh, Tor Torba Enoch. These are all just randomly named things, right? Or actually, what, what is Torba Tylus? Torba... Okay, that's just her name. Okay. Everyone apparently loves the name Torba in my tribe. Uh, <laughs> research speed particles, 15%. I don't know if these matter, uh, honestly. But uh, yeah, usually our empire, our people live a certain amount of years... 80? We live to the age of 105, eh? I don't know if it's better to get research or not for this. Like, these, are, these decisions here, I do not personally understand. So I'm going to go for research, because that sounds good, but I don't think it matters in terms of, like, being someone that's on a ship, you know? But that's okay. So now we have our new cast, the Trumfuken. <laughs> Trumfuken. Whatever the hell. Both of those get you demonetized. Both words get you demonetized, right? Uh, so yeah, we have another ship that can go and explore the galaxy. And we'll also make this guy control five. So now we can see this guy's going here. So we shall explore the other regions nearby our base. Perfect. This is going to be a little bit shorter of a route and then we'll tell him to go other places. You know what? You can actually go out here then. So I'll probably beat out the other guy, but that's okay. Because I do want to know what's around our starting area. And there we go. On we go. Let's go fastest. Let's go big speed. 
Fastest is based off your CPU and all that stuff, and of course we're recording at the same time. Uh-oh, let's uh, slow it down to slow as we check this out. Uh, construction complete. Cast Pob Kridak. <laughs> These are not town names, but don't worry about it. Uh, complete the construction of a research station in orbit of Navalis. All right. An abandoned ship has been left to drift aimlessly above this planet. The massive sails protruding from it, its hull suggests that it relied on solar power to function. So this is going to be a routine check. So let's go ahead and research this for now. Which is going to take him off of all that stuff of actually examining things. So that's okay. This is the same anomaly, so yeah. Oh, this is the thing that just got completed. Perfect! So... Oh, there we go. Discovery of alien life. The Cass Trumfoken has made a startling find on Edor Vang III. The planet is teeming with alien life. For the first time in history, we have encountered life forms that did not originate on Tau. This amazing discovery has silenced those who believed we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on Edor Vang III are sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. We may not be alone out here. So our society went up there. So we got points into that research. Plus 300 or, or 150, I think it was. So there you go. Very nice. Very good stuff. Let's pause for a second. Let's go back to our map. So our construction ship did finish up what he was doing. Um, now, we cannot construct anything in other areas just yet. Also, I think... Uh, did we just get a battle fleet? No, no, no. That's our... keep forgetting. Our Tau Empire is up top above everything else. Of course, in the greatness of space, everything is 3D, not 2D. <laughs> as, as we all know. Um, so, yeah. For now... Our battle fleet is going to hang out there, I think. Yeah, we don't really have much of a choice at the moment. We kind of just have to hang out in our own base and wait till we can get this mining station up so we can make some more or gather some more minerals. Preferably minerals, I think, over energy credits. And you even see the research station that we built has disappeared to show that we've actually obtained it, which is really awesome. So there we go. We'll speed up time back to fast. Wait until we have enough minerals and then we'll be good to go. Go a little bit faster here. All right, good. Contact report. Planetary Animalia. The Tau Empire is abuzz with news of the alien life that was found. While hardly intelligent by Tau Empyrean or Empyrean standards, uh, the fascinating beings defy easy classification and hint at the immense complexities and possibilities of the universe. Interesting. Back to fastest. <laughs> Nice, we found some really good minerals here. And of course, we could just watch our people do things and stuff, but you know, far more interesting when you're not doing that. And uh, I would like to point out that as we are in fastest, the frame rate crumbles from 240 to 80. Amazing. 10 out of 10. Oh, wait. Oh, we can actually already make our structures. I've been talking over it this whole time. That's okay. All right, let's uh, zoom in on our boy. So we have a choice of going for some more power. Or some more minerals. I say we go for minerals. I feel like that's going to be a little bit more potent for right now. Even though, of course, power is money. But uh, for now, we will select from our multiple choices. Or actually, we can probably just right-click on this guy and build mining station. Oh! Okay, so that's my bad there. I don't. Again, I'm very new to this game. I did not realize that the 200 that it was pointing out was to build both simultaneously. I did not realize that. Oh, well. It's, it's what happens. What happens, happens. So we'll go build this, we'll go back to our shipyard real quick, and we'll make another science vessel, because we have plenty of credits to make another leader. And I'm hoping that every leader that you make does not pull from your population, because go to the Tau Empire. Excuse me, I am drinking the alcohol, so I'm burping all over the place. It's terrible, I'm trying to hide it. Uh, yeah, actually, I'm definitely not drinking, definitely not. Nope. Mmm. Tasty. Alright. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we... I don't really understand how the whole population thing works. I don't know where it tells me when I'm going to get another dude. These are all my available jobs. We, of course, are currently have no unemployment and no available jobs. So it's all even, essentially, at the, at the current state of our empire. I just don't know when our empire is going to grow. As for me, that's not particularly the most obvious thing. We have 32 pops of Tau living on one planet. 
in our empire. And obviously, as we expand, we can grow that most likely exponentially. So yeah, seems interesting though. So yeah, if anyone has any tips for how to check that stuff, at least in this version, because yeah, back in 2.3, all you had to do was like click on your empire, and then there was like something here that told you, oh, there we go, at 35 pops. Oh wait, no, but it doesn't tell you anything there. Ah, see what I mean? It makes it so difficult uh, for me to fully gauge like when we're gonna get a new dude in our empire. It's much like civilization as well, with how we get uh, population increased over periods of time. Also, our trade value. There we go. 13. Not bad. We'd like to increase it some more. Yeah, we'll see. I guess we'll see later in the future. I just don't know exactly where. Oh, wait. There's population tab. There you go. But will this tell me how quickly our empire grows? There's currently no migration on this planet. That makes sense. Immigration pull, eight. There are no plants with ongoing immigration that have migration access to Tau. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> makes perfect sense. And then here's our jobs. We have rulers. We have two rulers. We have nine specialists and 21 workers. And apparently if you make a structure that requires a specialist, one of these workers gets plucked out and thrown into specialist. Makes sense, right? Then, of course, we have ground armies. This is our first surface guard and second surface guard. And then they have no general at the moment in time. And I don't think we can... Oh, can we recruit one? I guess we can. I don't think it's necessary at the moment, though. I think it'd just be a waste of uh, resources at this time. It's so weird that energy credits is money. <laughs> but it is. All right, let's continue on. I apologize for pausing System there, but... Complete. I feel like it helps. You know, we're going to stay on fast speed and not go above it. Just because uh, the, the frame rate tends to crumble and I don't want the recording to die. All right, Solar Sailor. You have discovered an abandoned solar sail ship in orbit around Kofifi 2. The sublight vessel was built by an unknown culture and appears to be several thousand years old. One of the massive sails has a large tear where some kind of object passed through. Most likely a meteoroid, which appears to have disabled the vessel, although the technology of the ship is severely outdated. It does possess some interesting engineering design choices. Interesting. The Eudora Vang system has been fully surveyed. How cool is that? Uh, so let's left click to go there. And we have one habitable planet, as we can see here. Can only colonize planets inside our borders. Obviously, we don't have this uh, solar system taking over. The only way to do that, we gotta send our construction, our construction ship over to the sun and then uh, build a base station. But of course, construction ship he is very busy right now, doing his stuff. 70% colonization, so 30% knockoff of what our current town is. But it's an arid world. That's not bad. Um, pop amenities usage will be increased by 30%. The upkeep also 30%. Resources from jobs and growth speed will be reduced by 15%. But it's about as close as we're going to get to a, a planet, I think, that is similar to what we have. And there's no negative perks here, uh, which is pretty dope. And of course, we're going to be able to build a bunch of uh, structures here. So I think the biggest issue here is blockers. The uh, impassable mountains, dangerous wildlife, the deep sinkholes, and quicksand basins. Yeah, no wonder it's only 70%. I'm sure we could fix this by fixing up the blockers, which is probably not too bad. Uh, here is shown any blockers or rare features the planet has, as well as the planetary features that provide its districts. This will go into more detail. Okay. There you go. So this is knocking off our district usage as well. Arid Highlands. Max generated districts, districts plus one. So that's a good thing. So we are getting positives here too. Lots of fertile land. More rich caverns. It's just right now the blockers appear to be blocking us from getting those districts. And that's about it. And if that's the only thing it's stopping us from doing, I don't think that's too, too bad. And it does seem like clearing blockers out is actually just spending energy to do so. Okay. But yeah, so I guess 70% ha habitable is all right. I don't think that's that bad. I think we will probably move into this planet, Edor Vang 3. Probably we'll call it Tau 2, for all we know. But ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed me kind of noob around here. And of course, any suggestions, any strategies that you guys have, I would love to hear them because I want to learn more and get into Stellaris. It seems like such a wonderful game. And uh, 
yeah, I just, 4X games are super cool, and the fact that it's real time is awesome. Of course, pause possible, as you can see here, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I gotta pause the game if I'm gonna try and learn it. And look at Eater Vang 1, oh my god, six resources, two energy credits there, and that's really about it in this sector, but, oh well, just having another planet alone probably will be pretty resourceful for us uh, in the long run. So yeah, thanks guys, and I'll see you all next time.